Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a librarian at the Port Orange Library, and I have a special guest today. This is Douglas Hunt from the Florida Native Plant Society. Welcome. Nice to meet you, Catherine. Thanks it's for nice having to me. Meet you too. Thanks for being here. So, Doug, um, you are the what's your title for the? I'm the Education and Outreach Chair of the Paw Paw Chapter. Now, your the Paw Paw Chapter is um, part of the Florida Native Plant Society, correct? Correct. Can you um, tell me about the Florida Native Plant Society and then more about the Paw Paw Chapter? Sure. Um, the Florida Native Plant Society is a, an organization of people who are passionate about Florida and our natural beauty and who are committed to the conservation, preservation, and restoration of Florida's native plants and native plants communities. Um, and the, chap the, the society is divided into chapters, um, which cover a county or two, um, usually. And our local chapter is the Paw Paw Chapter, which covers Volusia and Flagler counties. Now, what does Paw Paw stand for? So, most of the, all the chapters are named after plants. And in our case, it's a very rare plant that is found in Volusia County and uh, to the west of New Smyrna and running north to about Daytona. And it's found there and nowhere else on the planet. Wow. And it's called Rugal's False Pawpaw, or botanically, stay tuned, <laughs> Deringothamnus rugelii okay. is the botanical name. <laughs> but it's a scrub plant that's um, uh, gets a yellow, uh, yellow flower. It's very important for um, butterflies, and it's it 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 requires a very specific set of needs that are, and right here is the only place on the planet where everything aligned for this plant to e evolve. That makes me feel special. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. It does sound. So pretty cool. I mean, Florida is. Lucky because of the diversity of the state, we have one of the highest incidence of endemic plants, which is a plant that's found only here of any state in the country. So it's really important to look at as this as there's more and more development in the state. It's our plants become more and more important and conserving those rare plants that Florida has um, is something that we you know need to pay more and more attention to. Now if someone wanted to participate, um, first of all, how would they join the Florida Native Plant Society and your chapter? So when you join the Florida Native Plant Society, which you can do by going to the website fnps.org, when you join the society, it will ask for your location, and in joining the society, you join the chapter. Okay, wonderful. We also, the chapter just had a very successful plant sale, native plant sale, at um, the Pigott Center in South Daytona. And that's where you meet, correct? Yes, we meet, yes, we meet at the Pigott Center when we're meeting. On the, fir on the second Monday of the month at 7 o'clock. Now, behind us is, is the Park of Honor? The Park of Honor. Park of Honor, Park of Honor. in Honor. South Daytona. Yep. Um, tell me about the park and what you do there. So the chapter maintains a section of the Park of Honor as a way to showcase native plants and for people to actually see plants growing. Um, it also, because we have a work day at the park um, once a month, we have a group that comes in and looks after the garden, and it provides us with a way to interact with people and to tell them about native plants and the Florida Native Plant Society. And we always, every time we're there, you know, people will stop and they'll they're they're very kind. They'll they'll thank us for looking after the garden and how much they appreciate it. And so it's a, it's a great way to do outreach and to give people the plants are mostly labeled and um, it, it's, it's a good way to, to 
for people that don't know anything about native plants, it's a good way to see the plants, see the life that they bring, and to have a good experience of, a good introductory experience to, to native plants. I, I was really fortunate. I did a video with Marlin Spees in the Smyrna Beach, and that's where I first heard the term native plants. And I'm so glad I did. It's changed my whole life. <laughs> It can um, do that. It can do that. <laughs> it can do that. Now, I, what I'd like to know, most of all, what are your top 10 favorite native <laughs> plants? <laughs> well, when you asked me that, I couldn't possibly narrow it down to, 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 to I couldn't come up with only 10. Right. So I decided that I would just try to come up with good introductory native plants okay. that showcase what native plants are all about and that are pretty readily available. Okay. So I would start with scarlet sage, mm -hmm. um, salvia coccinea, botanically. Um, it's a, I work, I work at a nursery and it's, in addition to being a native plant, is the best performing salvia that we sell. It blooms almost year round. It blooms in blazing sun. It blooms in shade. It attracts bees and butterflies. Um, it's called scarlet or tropical sage because red is the most common flower color, but it also has natural variations of a really pretty coral pink and white. So you can plant you can have a very attractive garden with just varieties of scarlet sage. Um, another, we'll do, I thought we would do a couple of uh, wildflowers first. So another wonderful wildflower, and we have to have this one because uh, Coreopsis, the Coreopsis family is Florida's state wildflower. So I thought I would mention Leavenworth's Coreopsis. Um, I believe that there are about 12 different Coreopsis in the state. Um, the, the, the state wildflower is just Coreopsis in general, not a specific one. Um, all Coreopsis in general, kind of like it in moist situations, as I was driving here today from New Smyrna, I noticed lots of them um, in the ditches along the side of the road. But Leavenworth Coreopsis is a very good one for a gar for a regular garden situation because it will it doesn't need to be wet it will it's fine where you just you know have regular um, irrigation and it has a very long bloom period for coreopsis some of them are only spring bloomers some are in the fall but Leavenworth um, goes for most of the year and it has very nice, handsome basil foliage that's the, that are right above the ground. It makes a nice little rosette, and then it sends out um, these, you know, just the sweetest little yellow flowers on long, on long stems. Oh, nice. One that, and is, that many people will recognize is beach sunflower, um, Helianthus debilis. Um, that's, a, that's another Florida endemic, meaning it's only found in Florida. That is many, you can see that plant, if you've been to the beach, you've, you've encountered beach sunflower. Some people call it dune daisy. It's really in, Helianthus is the whole genus of sunflowers. So it, it really is, a, it is a true sunflower. Um, so beach sunflower is probably the best thing to call it. it. This is a plant that loves the beach and loves harsh conditions. As if you've been to the beach, you've seen it there. It grows on the primary dune where they, and it, you can kill beach sunflower with kindness. It's hard to kill it with neglect. So you can plant it in the sunniest, driest place in your yard. Um, never water it after it gets established and it will be super happy. Um, it's, My kind of plant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on from plants to um, another super cool, uh, I may use super cool too often, but another super cool uh, Florida native is Kunti, 
Some people call it Kunti Fern. Um, it's really a cycad. Um, cycads are ancient cone-bearing plants that date back to the time of the dinosaurs. Some, if you have palms, um, Kuntis are great as sort of, I refer to some things as shoes and socks plants because when there's a, like a long stem or trunk, you know, you need a little something at the bottom. Right. And Kuntis, which get to be very slow growing, so that may, maybe three feet high and three feet wide, generally speaking. So Kuntis are super cool. Um, for um, a grass, one of my favorite um, native grasses is Fakahatchee grass. <laughs> Just because it's fun to say Fakahatchee. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. It's um, a wonderful grass that ha that's got some size to it, so it, it, it's excellent as a border at the, uh, at, it's a good at back of the border plant, gets to be maybe five, six feet tall, it has, um, we're going to show in the picture very, the inflorescence of it have these wonderful, almost little dancing um, filaments that hang down from it, so it's, it's very showy, very durable, you do not need to cut this, this grass back um, every year. So that's a practice that people do with some grasses and it is definitely not necessary with Fakahatchee. Um, super drought tolerant, very handsome um, blue-green foliage. If you put, you know, if you planted Fakahatchee and muley grass, another wonderful um, native grass that lots of people know because that's the one that puts out those beautiful pink inflorescences in October you'd have a really start of a really pretty space. And then to introduce a couple of shrubs, um, a wonderful native shrub is called Simpson Stopper. I'm gonna put that in to represent all of the stoppers, which are a whole little, little family of Florida native shrubs. Simpson Stopper um, is a, coastal plant, um, but very adaptable as to sun and shade, has very nice little glossy leaves, and then gets very showy white flowers that have nice little fragrance, followed by red berries that birds love. And another wonderful native shrub is wild coffee. Um, wild coffee does best in the shade. The wild coffee has beautiful dark green quilted foliage and again a white flower and red berries. Um, it, the berry looks like a coffee berry and you can make a beverage out of them but there's no caffeine. <laughs> so I'm not sure what the point is exactly. but, <laughs> but, um, but that's why it's called wild coffee. Another great native shrub is firebush, Hamelia patens. Um, lots of people may recognize it because it has very distinctive red-orange tubular flowers. Those tubular flowers make it a great shrub for hummingbirds. And it's a plant that does well in full sun or shade. Um, then no talk about uh, native plants in Florida would be complete without mentioning sea grape. Um, about the most salt tolerant plant that's out there, if you live anywhere near the beach, this is a plant that you probably should have in your landscape. Um, sea grape grapes get really big um, when we don't have a frost, which we haven't had for quite a while, so there's lots of pretty substantial sea grapes out there. That sea grape has those big round mm -hmm. leaves which are so wonderful and sculptural and they yes. get sort of reddish tones based on the weather. And then the females get um, clusters of grape-like fruit, which is very important for critters. Um, and then of course it flowers so that there's all, so Sea grape is a pretty good plant for pollinators as well. And, and to wrap things up, so I think that the most important thing that 
some, uh, well, the best thing that someone can do for the planet is to plant a native tree. So we are lucky enough in, to have beautiful southern live oaks um, throughout the county and Florida. Um, so if you have room, southern live oak is a great tree to have. Yeah, if your space is limited, um, I wanted to give out a shout out to the sand life live oak, um, Quercus geminata, which um, is a smaller oak that works well in a yard that's, you know, where the space is more compact if you don't have acreage, which is, you know, what, really what <laughs> a big old southern live oak needs. Right. I need more native plants. Where do I buy them? <laughs> well, actually, um, Volusia County has three members of the Florida Association of Native Nurseries. So there's Lindley's Nursery in New Smyrna Beach. Katie Tripp has a nursery affiliated with her landscape business in Ormond Beach. And the Arboretum out west of Ormond are all members of the Florida Association of Native Nurseries and all of them carry native plants. If the, you have additional questions or want to know more about Florida native plants, whether it's the ones you've seen here today or others that you're interested in, check out the Florida Native Plant Society Paw Paw chapter on Facebook. If you have questions, that's a great place to ask and there's lots of people there that are willing to help. Yeah, that's a great place for a specific question and also the Florida Native Plant Society's general webpage at fnps.org has lots of information. There's more information about all the plants that we've talked about today. And in fact, you can do a search for Volusia County and find all the native plants. Right. Um, you can do a specific things based on, you know, whether you have shade, sun, whether you want to attract wildlife, whether you want to attract butterflies. It's an excellent resource. The Volusia County Extension Office and Master Gardeners are also another resource. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for supplying me with that, those wonderful photos. Can you tell me where you got most of them from? Yes, I wanted to just um, give a shout out to Paul Redman, who is past president of the Paw Paw Chapter, has been very involved in the Native Plant Society for a long time, and he is a wonderful, he's a Florida uh, naturalist, and he's a wonderful photographer, and he was kind enough to share most of the photos that you've seen behind us um, and so we want to just say thanks to Paul. Thank you Paul. Also if you'd like to learn more don't forget to check out your local library. We have many books on Florida native plants and landscaping.